Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Anxiety Rx podcast. I am very, very happy today to have a very, very special guest. My wife and partner, Cynthia, has agreed reluctantly after cajoling and doing everything I possibly can to get her to come on. She has agreed today to come on, so hopefully it'll go really well and we'll keep doing more and more of these because I think she has a tremendous amount of value to add to this conversation. And today we're going to talk about the sense of feeling staying together, feeling like you're staying together while you're apart. So welcome, wife Cynthia. How are you? I'm good. Thank good. you. Thanks good. for having me. You're welcome. I'm, I've been looking forward to this for a long time. Mm. We have these conversations in the car all the time, and it's like, we should record this. This is so good. And she's like, no, 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 no. But today, I've convinced her to come. So today, we're going to talk about that sort of Newfeld concept of staying together while apart. And why is it so hard for people to, to feel connected when they're apart from their partner? What do you think? Many of us who struggled to connect with when we were little, that we didn't feel we had a parent that was attuned to us, or there was some kind of mismatch with a parent, a caregiver. Um, so we don't we, feel comfortable well, like, in that right. connection. Th that's an old feeling of not being in connection, and that creates a sense of unsafety. And when a partner in our adulthood then, say, travels or goes to play golf <laughs> <laughs> maybe leaves unexpectedly for you know an event that you weren't aware of or some something of that nature can be quite it can take us back to that time when we were desperate for connection and it wasn't there wasn't for us there, yeah yeah so we project that onto our partner right we project the shortcomings or whatever of our parents onto our partners is it, would that be fair to say, or would you elaborate on that? You always usually have something really good to say. I, I think we look for what we didn't get in a partner, what we didn't get from a parent in our partner. We tend to come to relationships if we haven't become aware of patterns like this. We tend to come into our adult partnerships looking for the things that weren't provided, looking for sort of the magical other who will meet the needs that our parents didn't. And so there's an unwritten, unconscious expectation, usually on both sides, for the other to meet the needs that we don't even know we have. And because we don't know we have them, we have a hard time expressing that to others, specifically our partners, and it just causes a lot of conflict. I know sometimes, you know, when I'm when I'm going out or when I feel this guilt that I felt when I was younger about just not being present. You know, sometimes I will leave the house to kind of escape in a way. And that's, that's not a good, that's not a good way of maintaining connection with, with you, Cynthia. Yeah. And a big part of that is learning then to recognize when you are having the desire to maybe go out of connection or get more space for your own self and finding ways of communicating that to your partner so that that's that concept then of how do you stay together when you're apart so if one partner needs to leave for some reason or for their own need of having an opportunity to connect with themselves to to have a period where there there is physical separation to communicate that this is happening and this doesn't mean I don't love you. Mm. I'm not leaving you. Right. I look forward to seeing you. Bridging. Yeah. The <laughs> I look old forward bridging to, thing. Yes. I look forward to seeing you when I come home right. and why don't we we can watch do our show. something together when we see each other again. Yeah. I'm not leaving you. We can watch our show when I get back. I'm looking forward to that. Just there is that concept of bridging, and a lot of people don't even know the concept of bridging. I've mentioned it a few times on the podcast, but do you want to take that? Do you want to take the concept of bridging and just explain it a little bit? The idea, again, this is a Newfeld principle of you know there's a separation coming to point the other person in the direction of connection. We don't want our children, our partner, whoever we might be with to be facing the separation. Yeah. Like, uh, no, you don't want to, you know, okay, see ya. I'm, I'm going right. See ya, or dropping right. you off at the mall. It's like, see you later. Right. You know? So the idea is always to 
point yes. your partner, your child, whoever you happen to be with in the direction of your next connection. So if there's a long trip traveled, for example, to another, you know, time zone, it's there's that sense of, look, I'll, I'll text you when I get to the airport, I'll text you when the plane lands, I'll call you once I reach the hotel, those are all jumping points to the next bridging next connection um, the next opportunity to connect yeah, yeah. so you, you do feel like even though it's the person's away from you you feel like you're still connected to them and i think that's really important especially for those of us as children who didn't get that i know for me you know my dad was often away in, in the mental hospital sometimes and my mother worked a lot so there was this kind of sense of of no no connection that was planned for the future nothing i could really rely on you know i knew my mother would get home at like 11 p.m or 3 p.m or whatever time her shift would end or whatever but there was never any sort of conscious focus saying look i'll be home at three o'clock you know we'll go get kentucky fried chicken or whatever like something like that it's so important with your kids too just mm -hmm. to you know not just drop them off at school just say, hey, I, I'll be right back here at 3.30 and I'm looking forward to going to the mall and looking at those pants you like or or going to get that movie that we can watch tonight or something, getting the ingredients for making the dinner that we'll make together. Like really bridging that next connection so that we feel safe because so much of our anxiety and our worry and our and our, and our fear is separation, mm -hmm. you know, both from ourselves and, and from other people. And part of that comes down to having some certainty. And so things like having a schedule can be really helpful. Like if we think of our pets, many of us who have pets know this very well, that they like to know, for example, when they're going for a walk or when they'll have their next playtime or when the feeding it's feedings are <laughs> during the day and they mark their day by these events, they, they fall into a pattern with you. The same thing goes with ch children or, and, or our partner, you know, to have planned periods in the day when we know we will be gathering, when we know we will be together. This is kind of the, you know, now becoming maybe an old fashioned idea, but of sitting down together at a table to share a meal to share, you know, even just the evening meal, say that everyone sits down and joins the yeah. family for a meal. And so knowing that that's part of the day is beneficial for everybody to know that there's that point of connection. And it's, and it's reliable. Mm -hmm. Like we know, like dinner table, the dinner table used to be the reliable place that you, and like the kids would be like, ah, oh, I don't want to come in for dinner or whatever. But it was this sort of unconscious sense of almost ritual in a mm -hmm, way. Mm -hmm. And that's too, when you think about your own childhood, you know, getting called in, in back in my day, when we were kids, we were playing outside quite a bit. And so there was that idea of being called in for lunch, you know, being called in again at dinner time, and then being called in again, when the street lights came on, you know, there was a certainty to the schedule of the day for children, at least of my generation. And so we're looking at how do we put these sorts of markers in place on a daily basis with our partners, with our children, even for ourselves to have these points in the day where, okay, here's the time I've set aside to make myself a meal, to sit down and consume a meal, to have a chance to reconnect with myself, see where I'm at before say, you know, we head into our afternoon or we start our day of work in the morning. These periods where we have a chance for connection with ourselves and others are really important and good for relationship. Yeah. yeah. And it's when, you know, this feeling of being together when apart. So even if you miss an evening meal, you know, you come back. So sometimes I'll golf or something like that and I'll come back and I'll see the dishes are are waiting for me there and there'll be a little bit of like uh. but I think a lot of it is that I've missed the family dinner you know I'm not I'm not used to missing the family dinner so usually I'll go out in the evening not very often but sometimes I will so there is this sense like okay I I, I kind of broke the family trust in a way and then I went out at, later on at night and then came back because you know during COVID and stuff like that we were together all the time like thing about you and I is we worked you know we work out of our house so we're around each other all the time 
And there, I think we get used to that. I think you and I get used to that fact that, you know, I can yell up the, up the sin, sin, you know, and you're going to answer most of the time. And then the points where you don't answer, there is this kind of like, oh, okay, what's, what's that about? And then I'll ask Mike, it's like, where's your mother? Oh, she's at, you know, the gym or whatever. But there is this kind of sense in me like, oh, because I'm so used to you being around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that speaks to kind of this idea of, you know, knowing what to expect is helpful for many of us who've had early disruption, knowing what, having some certainty in our day and, you know, where are our, the people we connect with most are at any given time. We, we like that. So how do we do that? Yeah. How do we, in our couple or our children or whatever, I guess you mentioned it earlier, like having a schedule is really important. Yeah. I've lately gotten much better at including you and my eye calendar schedule. Like when I make a plan to, to do something, I'll invite you. And I think that's a really good thing because it's like, then you're not sort of hit blindsided. Like, oh yeah, I'm going out for dinner tonight. And I'm not, you know, as you can might tell is that I'm not the most organized person in the world. This is the organized person out of the, out of the household for sure. I kind of fly by the seat of my pants. So these are the things that I've kind of learned from sin is that, okay, just put me on your calendar. So when you're, you're making a, an appointment for dinner out or coffee out or golf or whatever, just put in the calendar and invite me. And it, it makes a world of difference between you and mm -hmm. I because it, it's like you have this sense that I'm not just going to blindside you and leave you. Right. And so not only is in relationship this a courtesy to keep the other person posted and, you know, in the loop in terms of what is going on in your life, it also addresses these younger wounds in us that, you know, we don't, we, we don't like that feeling of suddenly being left by somebody. Especially if that's what happened when we were younger. Yeah, yeah. Even if it's just for a meal or just to go out and run a couple errands. So, of course, we, you know, we want to have spontaneity in our life, of course. But on the whole, this does help most people who have, have some kind of separation wounding yeah. from their childhood. So, yeah. Yeah. And with my childhood, I didn't get the call in for night, like call in for the lights out or lunch or whatever. It was like, I was pretty much left on my own. Same with my brother. My dad was often indisposed on in some way and my mother was often working. So I didn't get that. So with you and I, it's sometimes it's hard for me to sort of, I, I'm used to being a bit of a lone wolf and it's caused mm -hmm. some friction between the two of us because it's like, you're the organizer in the house. So it's, it's only behooves me because you kind of are the backbone of this family to let you know what I'm doing. But there's part of me, because I grew up in this sort of lone wolf kind of lifestyle in a way, that, that it's hard for me to kind of go, oh, well, I should let you know, I should let you know. And then there's this part of me that's like, oh, I, I st I'll just still, I'll just do whatever I was going to do. And it, and it creates problems for sure. Right. And this is, this is how, you know, relationship be can become a way of growing together that we, you know, we, we can see where perhaps we didn't develop some skills in childhood that are beneficial in a couple relationship. And so, you know, if we can work together to, you know, understand who we're, who we're dealing with here right. Right. and where, where habits might come from, where patterns might come from. And, and conversely, it's on both sides that, you know, this is, this is a great kind of opportunity for both of us to grow and change, heal uh, together. Yeah. And mm -hmm. sort of, you know, make, make the other person important. Because I think when we grow up with trauma, we grow up in this very insular alpha child kind of mentality where we think, well, if it, if it, if it is to be, it's up to me. And that's how I operated for a long, long time. And sort of letting sin in to what we're doing has not been sort of a knee jerk reaction for me. In fact, the opposite is true. It's so many times and I'll feel terrible. It's like, oh, I've made this morning. It's like, oh, I made plans to, you know, go out for my, with my friend for dinner tonight. And I forgot to tell her. And then throughout the day, I'm like, how am I going to tell her? How am I going to tell her? How am I going to tell her? And then I'll just sort of blurt it out. It's like, oh, by the way, I'm having dinner with, you know, Dawn tonight or something like that. And I can see the disappointment in her face. You know, it's not that she begrudges me going out for dinner. It's the fact that this kind of got sprung on her. So this is what I mean about 
what was the what were the patterns in your partner's life did they get things sprung on them did they get things pulled away from them at the last minute and how are you doing that or how are you trying to not do that and making it really conscious and aware so the schedule is one of the things including you in the schedule is one of the other things is when i'm doing something put you in there as well when i'm making the schedule even if it's for things like you know, going to a dentist appointment for an hour that's down the street or whatever, just so that she knows, because we have three dogs as well. So that's another layer of complexity in this, in this particular environment as well. But just, I'm getting to know more that you need this to feel comfortable. Whereas before it was like, well, I don't need this to feel comfortable. So why should someone else need it to feel comfortable? And now I'm starting to say, oh yeah, okay. Now I've got to do it this way. And it's it's hard for me, as you know, to kind of just break that habit. Yeah. And and two, you know, this brings up the question, how is how is having consideration for your partner and being becoming aware of your patterns, becoming aware of your habits that aren't preserving relationship? How is this different than something like codependence mm. in a relationship? And so I think we need to do another podcast about codependence oh, we versus will. what oh, we're, we will, for sure. we're talking about right now. We will, for sure. So scheduling is one thing. Just letting your partner know and just being really aware, you know, what were the sore spots in their upbringing? You know, what were the places that caused them pain and how how are you as a partner? Not that you're codependent, not that you're responsible for fixing that, but just being aware that these are sore spots with them. Mm -hmm. And can you just, you know, maybe even take one at a time and just go into them and, and talk about it. Like this is what it is. Because before I would think, well, she's just, you know, impinging on my time. She doesn't let me do these things or whatever. And it's really, no, I can do all the things that I want. It's just, she just wants to know that in advance that this is what's going to happen. Yeah. And so we started out with the question of how to stay together well apart. And so you may wonder why we're talking about these kinds of things. And the main reason is we're setting the conditions of connection by keeping our partner in the loop, by creating a schedule together that we both feel could be beneficial. And then, you know, making the attempt to keep the schedule of, you know, points of connection throughout the day. And informing our partner when we're not going to be able to keep the schedule. And so all of these things set the conditions for when we do have to be physically apart to not have a response because, you know, we've been surprised or blindsided by it. So, yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, like I'll make this thing and I'll say to her, I, I said the other day, I had a text and I said, you know, this is the new me. So I'm, I'm telling you that on you know Thursday July 29th or something like that I'm going for dinner with a friend of mine you know and that's like two weeks in advance which would be not something that I did she really appreciated it. she came home I came home and she was like gave me a hug and said I really appreciate when you so it's funny how we have these blind spots and how it doesn't take much to really help your partner out which helps out your, your relationship it really does yeah it's kind of the idea of knowing knowing how to be together in a way that works for both of you and so everyone gets their needs met without it being a codependent situation right yeah and turning into a fight or resentment mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff too so it is well, a fine line to walk for it sure. is it can be especially <laughs> if both of you like especially if we're both so different because sin's so organized and i am so not organized and she's, she's nodding over there like that. If you can't see it on the other thing, it's like, yeah, she's organized and I'm not. And she's like, yep, that's how it goes, you know. But I have other traits that kind of semi make up for that. So, you know, we just, we work our way through it. You know, we're considerate of each other's childhood wounds, really. I think that's really what it comes down to is we're considerate mm -hmm. of others or each other's childhood wounds. Yeah, I think that's true. Thank yeah. you for your very, I think you did amazing on your very first podcast. I think that's awesome. Thank you. So we will see you next week. Hopefully, Sin will be with me and do more of these and that kind of thing where she gives her wisdom because she's been a therapist for a while. There's a lot of training. There's a lot of, there's always something going on in the bathroom up there where she's listening to Kathy Kane or Steve Terrell or Gordon Neufeld or whatever. 
and she's very, very knowledgeable, and I really appreciate her a lot. So that's it for this week, and we shall see you next time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>